you very much for your questions, and I'm sorry we didn't have enough time to take more questions. Um, I'd like to give the floor to Schengen for closing remarks. Okay. I think we still have five to seven minutes. I wanted to donate two minutes to Kenneth because he wants to okay. have some reflection. Kenneth, do you wanted to say something before I... Yes, thank Close you, Shang. And, and again, my omission, and I apologize in having a father who spent his entire career at AID, I, I didn't mention Anne and the, and the great partnership that they have with IFPRI <laughs> and the Foreman Fellowship. So I apologize for that. And certainly after this incredible talk, uh, so much focus was put on AID. And sorry for the omission. Thank but thank you, Anne, for all, all of your work. Thank you. Right. OK, very good. Thank you, Raj. I just wanted to sort of have my own reflections with all my bias on what you have said. Uh, number one is leadership. I very much agree that the leadership is so critical in achieving anything, anything. Uh, if you look at uh, around, it is a country where you have a strong leadership, where the poverty reduction, hunger reduction um, have been the, the, the greatest. Uh, you look at uh, Bangladesh, Ethiopia, uh, the strong leadership really contributed to that. And just about uh, well, your experience in Somalia, right? That really triggered your inspiration to lead this, uh, this agency <coughs> to, to uh, fight against hunger and malnutrition. In 2011, Hillary Clinton was standing here, exactly the same place, and she committed USID and the US government to support the, the Horn of Africa um, initiative. So it is this place the US committed its support to fight hunger and malnutrition in Somalia. I think 36,000 children you know, who were undernourished uh, who went to Hungary. That's the number exactly um, Hillary Clinton has cited that number. So number two is a, is a technology. Yes, I very much agree technology can be a game changer. But today the, the technologies have, have to have multiple wins. Now we used to work on green revolution technology, just the more yield, rice, wheat, and the maize yield. I think today, the technology not only will help to increase the yield, but more importantly, to build the resilience, tolerance against stresses, droughts, floods, heat waves, so the climate change will bring all these stresses uh, to our food production. So I think climate resilience must be part of the win. And you have already mentioned that, particularly this maize, drought resistance maize. The uh, newer technologies should also help to deliver nutrition outcome. This is another win. Biofortification is one, but uh, there are many, many ways we can do through, through technologies to improve nutrition. Obviously, um, the other win is uh, to save resources. I always give a good example uh, from my sister center, International Rice Research Institute, C4 Rice. So a typical rice has three carbons, right? This C4 rice has four, has four carbons, which will make this rice more efficient in terms of um, in terms of using water, land, energy, and uh, reduce more carbon emissions. And in the future, we hope that we can also add micronutrients into rice. So we have multiple wins, four wins, not just the two wins, three wins, four wins. Now, the number three is the data you have mentioned. I know your leadership at the USID to pushing the data is just wonderful. If you look at the data you just cited, Ethiopia, Bangladesh, where you have seen tremendous progress in reducing child stunting. These are the data from USID investment, investing the house of the service, right? You pre you practice part of that effort. We are very much engaged in the household service in Ethiopia, in Bangladesh, in Nigeria, Senegal, many other countries, in many of your Feed of the Futures countries. So the data, to connect the data, reliable data, is so critical. Not only to tell you the real situation on the ground, but also to help you to analyze the causal relationship between or among different factors what has been contributed to, to the reduction in stunting. So EPRI has done some work on that. I think the data is only part of the story. Analysis, research based on the data will be equally important. So let's also analyze the data. Then the, you also raised some of the questions as to why China and India still have a large percentage of hunger, malnutrition. And do we have the answers to that? 
we have been working in these two countries for a long time. I came from China. I worked on India for many, many years. Actually, one of my first jobs here at APRI is to look at India's uh, agricultural development. So I think it's a policy. Policy in these two countries have really messed up. So the current agriculture policy is not economically efficient. It's not environmentally sustainable. It does not produce health, healthy, nutritious food. It contributes to more carbon emission. What is that policy? The subsidies, subsidies of inputs. So when the farmers have more subsidies to buy more water or free, even free water, free, free electricity, then they will overuse it. And so economically, it's not efficient. So we must work together to make sure that they can really transform the agricultural and the food system to deliver nutrition and health outcome. And you also suggest that we should have a, a, a so-called situation room. About uh, three weeks ago, I was in Rome together with my colleague Stacy Robert. FAO is proposing this situation room because they are also under pressure, particularly the Ebola failure uh, by WHO. They wanted to see where are the situations <laughs> so they can take a rapid response and they need to help as well. So we are looking forward to work with FAO to have that situation room somewhere in Rome or in, F in Washington so we can see the real situation, timely data, timely, uh, let's say, uh, emergencies somewhere so we can take the responses very quickly. Now, um, finally, I, the malnutrition or malnutrition is not only a moral issue, it is a moral issue. It is also an economic issue. So EPRI study shows that investing in addressing malnutrition has very high economic returns, so higher than any other investments. So one, one invested in addressing malnutrition could have $17 return in Bangladesh, maybe $30 in some other countries. On average, it could be $30. You would not be able to find such high returns from other kinds of investments. So let me thank you, Raj. Thank you for your leadership. You continue the leadership after you left uh, USID. And uh, we are looking forward to, to work with you in a different capacity, in a different uh, um, let's say situation. Yeah. Let's thank him again. Thank you, Ron.